Welcome to yet another edition of our online entrepreneurship initiative. I'm your host, Leroy Kumalo, and this is our second edition of our Human Resources uh, module. Before we get started, let us remind ourselves of the ground rules. Remember, we're going to have our question and answer section at the end of our of our training. So if you can post any sections, any questions that you have on our, our portal, then we can discuss them at the end of the session. Remember to wait for others to finish speaking before you start speaking. And also join the meeting on time and make sure that you have the right connection and you are properly connected in order not to miss out. To get started, we want to start on the compensation and benefits. Our previous sessions discussed on the human resource function, what is involved in human resource um, processes. We spoke about the staffing process and the importance of planning, planning of skills, planning on how to recruit and selection of the right candidates. We also spoke about the importance of employee records and how this can improve the productivity of the organization. Remember, you have all the information regarding past uh, records of your employee, past training which they've done, and anything that you might think um, they might need training on. So this is why the employment records are important. And also, do not forget, developing the existing employees, train them, nurture them to the better managers in order for the business to grow. Now, let us talk about compensation and benefits for our employees. In this segment, we want to discuss the performance appraisal processes, how to improve uh, ineffective performances in the appraisal interviews. Before we get started, please test your current knowledge. How's your level of understanding with regards to the compensation and benefits. How do you understand the performance appraisal uh, review process and improving the ineff uh, ineffective performance of your employees? Let us get started. Compensation and benefits. What is the meaning of compensation and benefits? Now, this refers to compensation. Or let's remove the word compensation. This refers to the salary and any other monetary or non-monetary benefits passed on by you, the organization, by you as the business owner, to the employee. These are important aspects of the human resource management. They help to keep the workforce motivated. It helps and give benefits to employees based on their performance and actions and bring the best out of the employees at workplace. While there is compensation, accrued salary, or accrued wages with the employee, as well as there are benefits for uh, uh, meeting the obligations and the key performance indicators are properly met in the organization. This is where the benefits come in. This is where we see as the, I as the employee. This is when I also try by all means to bring out the best at my workplace because I see that my efforts are not in vain. Well, this can be monetary wages. Most farmers in Zimbabwe pay their employees according to the number of hours or days which they have worked. While they do this, while you do this, as the business owner, you need to consider the stipulated minimum wages of your employees as indicated in the National Employment Council wage analysis. Now, when we talk to performance management, this may, can be defined as the accomplishment of an employee or manager's assigned duties and the outcomes produced on a specific job or function. The performance appraisal review or valuation refers to the systematic description and review of any individual's job performance. This is the one as the business owner, you review my performance as your employee. The primary goal being 
to improve the performance of the organization. When I'm improved as the employee, then the, the benefit, I mean, the organization also benefits because I bring out my best to the organization. The appraisal is used for a variety of purposes. This can include the following. To de determine any pay increase or bonuses that can be offered to your employees. It can also provide employees with career goals and direction for future performance. Now, this performance appraisals looks at each employee's performance in line with the key performance indicators, in line with whatever is expected from the employee. Depending on the company policies, the performance appraisal process should be calculated over a certain period. You have to set a time. After a certain period of time, look at the performance of the employee. Go through it. Go through the, it with them. Analyze it. See where they are lacking and uh, commend where they are doing their best. Well, these are some of the factors that can be considered, especially with regards to farm employees. Firstly, time spent on duties assigned. How's the employee's response when they are given duties for the day? How, they tackle, how do they tackle the duties? How much time do they spend on that work? Is it according to what the business is budgeted for that particular day? Or they spend days doing work that's only assigned for a certain period of time or just one day or a few hours? Effectiveness of the work performed by the employee. How effective is the employee's work? How about eventually we are farmers? At the end of the day, we want to produce fresh produce. Our employees play a vital role. Our general workers play a vital role in ensuring that our produce is fresh and they, it meets the standard of the business and the expectations of our customers. Do they play a role in ensuring that our produce is fresh and meets the company standards? What happens to the livestock? Perhaps we have livestock at our farm. Are any sicknesses reported on time? Is there any negligence from the employees when it comes to the hanging of our livestock? These are some of the factors um, that can be taken into consideration when it comes to performance management of our employees. Now, how can we improve an ineffective performance? Well, during the course of the appraisal, performance appraisal, this is where both positive and negative results are brought out regarding the employee's performance. You as the business owner, you as the HR manager, then can decide some of the ways to assist the employee to improve on what they do. Well, some of the strategies that can be implemented are as follows here. Facilitate interactive training. Offer training to your employees. Recognize and reward your employees. Bring technology into service. Promote a positive work environment. Aim high, but set clear goals for the employees. Clear goals that are smart goals and that are attainable by the employees. Well, in this aspect, we have covered employee performance. We want to have an example related to our operations that gives us in depth of benefits or of benefits how they can drive the performance of our employees. I'm going to share the case study with you. Please do share your views and how you think performance um, uh, employee performance is important to be reviewed after each and every time. Also, think about your own businesses. What aspects have you learned? What do you think you should introduce in your own operations? Let's move on to training and development. In this section, we want to consider the concepts and major purpose of training in an organization. We want to describe the steps in developing and implementing an effective orientation and training. To get started, please test your knowledge. How's your level of understanding when it comes to training and development?
development in farming? Do you think there's a need for any training and development in your line of business? With regards to training and development, we're talking about yourself as the business owner to all the other employees involved. How do you identify training needs? Do you identify any training needs for your employees? Is there any need for any of them to be trained? Do you identify that? Well, let's look into it. These are educational activities within a company that are designed to enhance the knowledge and the skills of our employees. Look at how technology is advancing each and every day. Technology is being introduced in different industries. Agriculture not left out. We as farmers, we need to develop ourselves and our operations in order to be competitive. Development would include both the training to increase skill in performing specific jobs and educating to increase general knowledge and understanding of our total environment. Now, let's look into the, the training process. What's involved in the training process? Identify training needs. As the business owner, you need to identify if your employees need any training or require any sort of training. The needs assessment refers to a systematic objective identification of training needs. This is where we identify the goals of the business. If the employees are still working towards meeting the goals of the company, if they are not, what's hindering them from uh, 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 focusing or contributing more to meeting the goals of the business? Do they need training? If so, what sort of training do they need? After that, we then develop training material. This is where we can outsource uh, uh, people and uh, after we have uh, realized the training that the, our staff need, now we develop the training material according to, assessment, to the assessment that we have done, targeting the needs of each and every employee, targeting the skills uh, which are different according to the uh, what's required by each and every employee, according to our assessment. Then now, after the material has been developed, now the actual training uh, is embarked on. You as the farm owner or the manager, you can appoint a suitable individual to impart the skills and knowledge to the employees. This can be one of the managerial uh, people in the organization or this can be outsourced, people with skills to offer such knowledge is required as per your assessment that you hold of them. Now, we're also going to discuss, share and discuss the importance of identifying training and designing training methods. Now, this case study that will be shared with you will help us understand the importance of identifying training needs and how to do so and what are the benefits of doing so. If you've already done that in the organization, please share with us on how you've done that. Perhaps it might also help us all in the group and see if we can implement some of the things that you've implemented in your own business. This will be discussed at the end of the session uh, through our discussion as well as the question and answer question um, section. Now, legislation and compliance. Do you understand the human resource legislative framework and how to develop a compliance framework? Now, Human resource compliance is an area that traces back to the very origin of the human resource function, administrative and regulatory functions. Compliance continues to be especially critical in the human resource management. And there are different regulations and laws that govern the employment relationship. Now, Human resource professionals must be able to understand and navigate those laws. You as the business owner, taking on the HR duties, you should be able to understand and navigate those laws to help the organization remain compliant, to help your own organization 
to remain compliant and avoid paying any fees or penalties. Now, this is how you can develop the, the compliance fr uh, framework. Firstly, documenting policies and procedures is key. You have your financial policies developed. If you need assistance, get consultants to assist you. You have your human resource for, um, policies and procedures developed. Consistently apply your policies and procedures. They're not just developed such that we say the business has the documented policies and procedures, but they are developed with the view of implementing consistently each and every information that's in the policy and procedures. Remove barriers to compliance. Why are we failing to be compliant? Remove them. Reinforce with training. Reinforce the staff members. Provide training. Uplift the employees. Stay up to date and appraised with ever-changing laws and regulations. There's so much change that's happening around us. We need to stay abreast of every change that's happening around us. Now, as the developer or instigator of the um, human resource policies or any other policies that we might have in our businesses, we need to take it up on ourselves to ensure that myself as the business owner and my management team, we understand all the policies and procedures of the company. This will help us to flow them down from managerial to our staff members and to all the staff members, either part-time or full-time members. All the employees should adhere to the policies and procedures of the They should know them and adhere to them at all times. Embark on a training. Your policies and procedures will also entail on how you can audit yourself as the business owner to see how compliant you are in your business. Sh I mean, schedule these um, compliance audits. Audit your business. See how you're doing. Are you meeting the standards that set in your policies and procedures? This is a simple documentation from developing documents and procedures, implementing them and ensuring that they are implemented throughout the organization by everyone involved, especially from management to uh, general staff or general workers. Within the agricultural sector, there is the labor legislative. Like any other sectors, the agricultural workers are covered by the Labor Act. So, myself as an employee in the agricultural sector, I have the following rights. I have the right to have a contract of employment. I have a right to maternity leave, especially for female workers. Special leave of 12 calendar days per year. Vacation leave or sick leave. If the sick leave now exists a certain number of days, the worker is granted accrued leave or certain arrangements are made to ensure that Perhaps the job is still secured while they are, uh, are getting paid or unpaid leave. The working environment, I have the right to work in a safe environment. Right to refuse dangerous work without any protective clothing, especially if the environment that we work at is harmful to the health of any employee. There should be protective clothing. Right to protection and first aid uh, assistance and transport provided by the employer, depending on the policies and arrangements that we have, especially with regards to transportation. These are the basic uh, rights that an employee in the agricultural sector have. We need to understand them as the employers and make sure they we understand them and push them back to our employees. They understand them. This is our rights and this is how my business will operate. Are you going to be able to operate this way? Then we move forward. In that way, we're creating a very healthy work ethic and work culture within the organization. Remember, 
all the assessment that we are looking for, all the work that we are requesting that you send us back will be part of your assessment. An exam will be posted online, or if it hasn't been posted yet, please uh, write the exam, submit it on time, as it is part of your assessment. Now we uh, move over to our discussion and um, question and answer section. So this is where we give each other opportunities to share any experiences. Let us share how we uh, uh, operate in our business. Let us discuss, let's have our questions, let's have our answers. Let us let our questions be brief and precise. Let our contribution be precise as well and brief so that we give as much people an opportunity. Thank you so much. Now we open for our question and answer session. Again, I'm Leroy Kumalo, and I'm your host.